setting your goals. Now, there's different, everybody, when I have a mentoring student, the first thing I ask them is, what's your goal? And it's not making money. Every, that's just a way to achieve your goal. So sometimes, some people have, they just need quick cash. They don't have very much money. They need to make, make money now. So what you would do is you would do bird dogging, which is you know finding deals for other investors. And guess how you meet these other people is in the room. If you want to be a bird dog, you need to find someone who's got the access to money. This is where you meet them, right here in the club. Uh, you would flip contracts, get something on your, uh, and then flip it to another investor and don't do any rehab yourself. Or you could do lease options, where you're just flipping the lease option because that doesn't take any money out of your pocket also. Um, if you just need, um, you need some money, you're not looking, you'd like maybe some money now, but you're willing to wait for it a little bit, you know, maybe this year, six months, it's not immediate. You could do wraps, which we're going to talk about. Uh, you could do a long close, tie the property up with a long close, maybe 60 or 90 days, and then find somebody who's going to do it, and then just flip it to them. Or you can, lease options are also good. Uh, so if you can take somebody with a lease with an option and fix their credit, uh, and then get them qualified, and then you uh, get them qualified and make, make money that way, that's another way. It could be, it could take you six months or up to a year, maybe, or maybe two. It depends on what your goals are. If you say, listen, I can wait for two years, that's okay, I've got it, or I can wait a year. So I'm going to go after people who uh, need some work done, they're not totally uh, horrible on their credit, but they need some work done, they need, so by the way, I forgot to, we have, a, we made a deal with a credit company, I have some of their folders out there, and uh, who seem to be pretty good, um, I had a little, I had a mistake on my credit, which I found uh, by checking it, and they fixed it, because I just went for a new car lease, and my credit was back up again, so whatever, they did, they did it right. Um, uh, we also have, a, that's one, another perk of gold members, that you get $100 off the credit report. And it's a good thing to be involved with credit, so because one of the things you can promise when you're sitting in front of a seller and trying to get them, talk them into uh, selling your house, so I'll fix your credit for you. I mean, I'll pay a couple hundred bucks to get somebody a deal, and then I'll go fix their credit so they can go ahead and buy uh, another house down the road. That, you know, that's a lot of people who are sellers. Most of them have bad credit, and they are. That's a big selling point. So if you can say, I'll fix your credit for you, don't worry about it. Or you can get a rehab partner to put up the money. And then you could rehab the property. And then, you know, within a three, four months, you'll make some serious money. Um, the third type of goal is retirement. There are a lot of people who have jobs now. They don't need the money now, but they don't have a good retirement fund. And real estate is the best retirement fund I can think of. It is really good. I have a, uh, um, a 401k. And then I have always used it. I have what they call a third party administrator um, who has um, my account. I have the money, but he has the account. And so I just pay him a fee. And now when I write a, um, a deposit um, or a contract for a property, it's done in the name of my pension fund. And all the money that laid out gets laid out through my pension fund. And then when we sell the property, the money goes back into my pension fund. So I've built up my pension fund tremendously. You could also do this with an IRA, even if, you only, even if you have a few thousand dollars. If you used your IRA to tie up a property, then you flipped it to somebody else, and then you got a $5,000 fee. Now, the original thousand that you put up to tie up the contract, plus the 5000 goes back into your IRA, now you have $6,000 in your IRA. So it, it's, uh, it's a good thing to look into finding a third-party administrator. I, I use Entrust. Um, we're going to have... Um, I think their, their website is entrustadmin.com. I like them because they don't require you uh, to give the money to them. There are certain other ones where they keep your money. So every time you have a contract, you need money, you've got to contact them. That is a pain. I have a checkbook with my pension fund, and I just write the checks. You know, you can't take money out personally. But I think if I remember for someone um, who was an accountant said that you can borrow money from your, uh, your pension fund or your IRA, uh, for a certain amount of time without a penalty. And you know what? Even if it's a penalty, it might be cheaper than borrowing your money, too. So can you think about that? Uh, so say you're looking for retirement. Now, if you can afford this, what the, this is the best thing. This is the dummy way of getting rich. All you have to do is buy a bunch of properties. And it used to be the point where if you did a 15-year loan, you'd probably have a negative 
um, on a negative cash flow every month. But interest rates are so high, low, and rents are so high that it's really possible to even get a, a positive cash flow, or at least break even, for 15 years. And I think 15 year loans are like about 2.6%. It's unbelievable. If, if you do the math, and, and you think, well, all I want to do, I don't need the money now. Even if it's a little negative, I can afford that because I've got a good job and I need the right house anyway. But I want to be retired in 15 years. Here's your, you buy a bunch of properties with 15-year loans, and you're retired in 15 years. You have free and clear houses. And that is the ultimate goal of everybody is free and clear houses. You're not dependent on the economy, on interest rates, on Europe or anything, on the Federal Reserve. You've got free and clear properties. You're, you've got good life. You've got a good life because rents always go up. They may dip a little, but you know, if you look at, there's always a, a line. You know, it's jagged, but it's always going to continue up. So um, you can another way if you want to uh, do long term is you can buy a property with a hard money loan that needs work because the banks won't finance those, rehab it, and then refinance, and then hold the property and rent it out or lease option it. Um, and so even if you can't qualify, if you can find a partner who can qualify, um, and you can do deals like that together, I've done that. Um, you could do a really long-term lease option. We're going to get into that a little more later. Uh, we talked about the 15-year mortgage. Or you can buy an appreciating neighborhood. There's certain neighborhoods that, outside of economic reasons, they're going to appreciate. Something's happening. A major corporation is coming in. Uh, the city is pouring money into it. It has nothing to do with economy. It's a local specific thing that you know darn well. Like uh, um, if you have uh, certain areas that are very expensive, what happens is when they become so expensive, the adjoining, you know, they have Marine Del Rey adjacent. <laughs> because it's not Marine Del Rey, but that became expensive because it's adjacent. Because people decided they'd like to live in Marine Del Rey, but they can't afford it, so they'll live in Marine Del Rey adjacent. So if you can identify those new, uh, you know, the new up and coming neighborhoods, that's a good idea. Any questions about goal setting before we move on? Okay. Okay. Here's your personal goals. How badly do you really want it? And what are you willing to give up to get? Everybody's got a story. One of my favorite um, quotations is, you can make excuses or you can make money and you can't do both. I mean, I don't want to hear the excuses. Well, like this, did you go out and put the property? Well, like this, why that? I Well, did you find the cops? Well, no, 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 no. Everybody's got a story. It, it doesn't work. The, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. And if it means giving up TV, if it means, you know, going out there after, um, if you work, oh, I have a full-time job. There's Saturdays. Uh, you can go and look at properties uh, after this, especially when the time changes. It's like, then there's absolutely no excuse. Well, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to door knock. Hire somebody to door knock. There's always an answer. But you have to really want it. And the people who are doing it, I can, some of my students are not successful. Why? They're not doing it. No matter how much we bug them, no matter how much we can, they don't do what I teach you. And the ones who are doing it are the ones who are successful. You know, you just got to take what you know to work. This is what we're going to teach you, this is what you know to work. But if you don't do it, it's not going to work. Okay, everybody, who's not, who 